second installments of uh, constructing your own dummy part two. Try to uh, get through this as quick as I can. Uh, for the trunk, I use MDF wood. Reason uh, it's cheap, it's easy to make, and it's readily available anywhere at any hardware store, any Rona, home hardware. Everybody has it, and it's very easy to cut. Um, so I glue the uh, seven pieces uh, of uh, MDF board together. Um, you uh, use a carpenter's glue, any carpenter's glue will be fine. This uh, carpenter glue I use is really good because it, it's, it's dried in one hour and you can declamp in three hours. I didn't have enough uh, clamps so I put on a flat floor and I put all my weights on top. It's about 300 pounds of weight. It's not the best thing. Clamping is actually better if you have enough clamps, but if you don't, you could uh, put weights on top. And once it dries, I took it and I cut it down to size. Um, I had to do two passes with the circular saw, one on the top, and flipped it over, and then make another pass again because the wood is just way too thick. Once you got it down to the correct size, I started chiseling and cutting the angle holes. Um, the best way is that you make your measurements. Uh, you can find my measurements from the first video, and you put two pieces of metal, one from the bottom, one from the top. Uh, so that you don't cut past the, the, the mark that you need to. Um, then you chisel out. It's really easy. It's not hard to do. This wood is really soft because it's MDF. So uh, once you've done that, I went on and did the second hole in reverse. Now somebody has been saying uh, that uh, you can you use a power tool to do this. Uh, yes, you can come back to the, uh, the end of the dummy, the half dummy that you glued together. Trace the whole triangle out. This is the triangle that it's at the same angle as the angle hole that you're cutting. Trace two pieces of it out, cut that out of another piece of wood, and you can take that piece of wood and practically screw it on your dummy. And because you're you're working on the inside half of the dummy, therefore you could easily screw it down, and then you can cut over that using that as a jig with a circular saw if you don't really want to cut by hand. That's another way to cut it. So you cut these two armholes correctly, the correct size, and then you move on to your middle armhole. And you cut the middle armhole, and then what happened is at this point I've produced two of these exactly the same okay as long as you know that where's the front of the dummy hole is and the back of the dummy hole is just a little bit bigger so that the arm can have some play so now you have two of them identical I, I did the leg before I cut the leg hole because the leg hole has got to match the leg what I do with the leg is I put my own leg up against the wall uh, with a piece of paper or cardboard on the wall and I took a marker and I trace the shape of my leg out and in this case, I'm doing a slant, not the straight one like my first video. The leg will come out in a slant because it seems to work uh, in this one uh, better. So, I so with this piece of paper, I placed it on the dummy, knowing these measurements right here that uh, I've adjusted the shape of the leg, uh, how far I want it in, how high, and where it's going to go. And then I used those measurements and I traced it onto the. Uh, Pressure treated lumber, same kind that you use to build your balcony or your fence with. They come in uh, 10 or 12 inch wide, so I trace that, cut it out of the two piece laminated uh, pressure treated wood, place that on the dummy, and then see if it fits. Now I place the leg on the dummy and uh, the slanted hole there, trace the hole so I know how big the hole needs to be, and uh, score the holes, and then close the dummy together, clamping it without the glue. Now without the glue, I'm checking on the movement of the arms and the leg. The arms I took from my other dummy. And this is where you clean up your chiseling holes so that you can adjust how loose you want your dummy arm and leg to be. As you know, the arms are going to be a little bit smaller than the hole so that there's play. You always need that play so that the arms wiggle left and right. It's not like a tight fit. You want a loose fit. But how loose is up to you. Once everything is good, I clamp it down with glue and glued it. I don't even have enough clamps. I got seven clamps and that's really still not enough. But anyway, that, that will have to do.
Now this part cutting it, I used a circular saw. I didn't take any pictures because it was a real mess. Sawdust goes everywhere in the garage. Um, cut it at a 45 degree angle on all four corners. And because your saw is only a 10 inch blade, it's only going to cut uh, both sides on each angle. It's going to, you're going to have to cut both sides, one on each side to just get one corner. And most of the time I couldn't even get the corner to cut off. I have to finish it off with uh, a handsaw just to get one corner off because it's such a thick piece of wood that even if you try to cut both sides of the 45 degree, you will might not still cut all the way through. So there's a lot of elbow grease involved in cutting. Each side has to be cut twice with a circular saw and once with a handsaw to get the whole corner off. And once you cut all four corners off, it looks like a, a stop sign, an octagon kind of shape. Then you go round it off, and this is the only special equipment I had to buy, which is an electric cleaner. Uh, I got it on sale or uh, used for about 50 bucks. And you know, brand new, not on sale, they usually go for about $100 each. And uh, as you can see uh, underneath, this, uh, the blade just spins and it peels off, uh, scrapes off the wood and shoots it out. Um, so that is really the uh, the equipment that you, you need to get that most people don't have because you can't you can't sand all this off by hand. You need an electric planer. It's the, it's the only way to round the dummy off into a cylinder shape. Once you rounded it off with the planer, then now you have to go through it with the belt sander, and then I'll make it smooth and round. Then. This this process took like a, at least a day or two of just sanding alone because it's just a huge piece of wood. By far, uh, sanding it and making it round is really the, the biggest labor-intensive work there is because it's such a huge piece of wood. I mean, the angle is cutting it twice to, to, to get just one angle and then finish it off with a handsaw. There's a lot of elbow grease there. And uh, you probably go through uh, an extra uh, circular saw blade because uh, it's going to go dull with all this cutting. And you've got to put in a new blade uh, halfway through, and that's what happened to me. At this point, I rounded off the leg and uh, I put my uh, old dum other dummy's arms on it and I tried it out and played with it to see if it works. It worked great, so now on to the arm. Now, the arms is also a lamination process. I used the best wood I can buy. In my case, I picked up a bunch of the wood that's birch hardwood. It comes in two tone from the same tree. There's an inner a color and the outer color is different. I think the inner color is darker and the outer color is lighter. It's a beautiful wood. It's a hard wood. It's a very tight knit grain. Uh, laminate the uh, pieces together. Cut it into sides. Make sure that you draw all your lines correctly when you cut. I really marked it carefully so that when I'm cutting, I won't do anything wrong. Now cutting it, uh, since I only had a handheld circular saw, I don't have a table saw. Just get any crappy piece of wood that you got and just cut a slit underneath and then mount it. I didn't have holes, so I drilled my own holes through the saw, uh, the metal part of the saw, and then uh, I mounted with like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight screws. And it, that saw is not going to fall off or go anywhere. And I put that on top of the table and screw that down onto my scrap table, and then use that as a table saw. And once again, I used the handheld planer and then the belt sander to round off the arms after I cut it on the table saw. And then here's another test fit to see how, how well it fits and uh, how it looks like and how much play there is in the arm. And then uh, onto the box, uh, the stand. The stand is really simple. Sometimes the simplest things is the easiest and the best way to go. I've used this method for many, many, many years and uh, the stand hasn't broken yet. All oh, this is a box on top of a flat piece of wood. Very simple. As long as you use screws and glue, it, it will hold. And this box stand method allows the dummy to swivel a little bit and allows it to walk back and forth a little bit. So it, the dummy really is as good as wall mounted. On top of that, it's a stand that you can just, you know, uh, push around in the room and put it anywhere you want. Uh, it doesn't take much space. It's not like you need a special mount or a special wall thing and a special frame. It really doesn't take any space and it's really practical and easy to build. And to give it a personal touch, I decided to do an engraving in the back. 
uh, it says Wing Chun Ki, it means Wing Chun Fist. Um, it's uh, written in uh, a script font, a uh, script Chinese font, not a not a block kind of uh, wording. It's a very uh, brush stroke like word. And then my signature at the my signature at the bottom. And then I glue that, uh, clamped and glue that in the back of the dummy to give it a nice uh, signature touch, so that it gives it some uniqueness to to this dummy. And here's some pictures of it. And one more time uh, for the unique uh, hardness of of the dummy uh, trunk, since it was uh, done in. Uh, in uh, MDF boards, uh, I use the same glue and I use that like a varnish and I paint that over the dummy uh, to give it an actual durability. It becomes so hard after that you paint the glue on top and the glue dries clear. The, the, with the glue on top and it dries clear, uh, the dummy is just as hard as any other hardwood on the outside so it, to give it protection. Then on top of that, I put in the several coats of uh, wood stains or varnish, and then on top of that, uh, uh, several coats of wood stains and then several coats of, uh, of varnish, and uh, that will really protect the dummy and it gave it really, really good colors. So here it is, uh, here's the finished product and uh, I hope uh, you have as much fun as I did uh, building this. Good luck and uh, see you next time.